So welcome back to my channel. And I hope y'all are doing amazing out there. Because, well, I am back at home for my usual home time right now. I want to talk with y'all about how I got a great shot out on the road. So right at the beginning of the title, you will see it. I've gotten a lot of likes on Instagram for, after I posted it. And, uh... I want to talk with y'all about how to get it from the sleeper without having to go up to the front. Now this is going to vary depending on your truck configuration. I know some of them don't have sleeper windows and some of them ride a lot rougher than others. We'll address those two issues as well. Stay tuned because if you do have a sleeper window, this will be an awesome thing for you to do especially if you're in a team driving environment or you're parked at a rest stop so I've done this before plenty of times this ain't my first time to the rodeo. Okay, <laughs> that out of the way. We're going to talk about camera setup for doing landscape shots from your sleeper. This might be the situation where if you're in a solo environment, you're at a very nice rest area with an unobstructed view. Or if you're in a team environment like I am, you got a nice view out your sleeper window. And... You just want to capture that great looking landscape that's out there. Or just off, just off to your left or right side of the interstate. So, now a lot of, this is wholly separate from drive cams and dash cams. And as you'll see, it'll require a different type of camera. One that's either A, built into your phone, like this or B, using a real camera like this one or something similar. Now, I mostly use the latter because I'm already trained on this stuff. Uh, I've already gotten some experience with it. But you can go back to some of my previous episodes on rodeo photography and my shutter therapy session, for example in order to learn some of the details about what kind of camera to get, etc. Now, let's start with features you want on your camera for doing this kind of shooting. And the first is either a stabilized lens or in-body stabilization. Now, some phones have started to offer this this camera definitely has it. It's had it for years. Yeah, this is the Olympus OMD EM1, which, uh, and of course, my Canons actually use a lens based stabilizer built right in. And I'm filming you on one of those, specifically the Canon EOS M50. Now, I've done quite a few shots with things like power shots and stuff before, too. And when I say that, I mean. Uh, Yes, I've used Canon Power Shots in the past. I've used uh, some, some of the even cheaper cameras to do this kind of shooting. And when I say even cheaper, I'm talking about back in 2005, I was getting some great shots out of bus window using a very inexpensive HP PhotoSmart 318. <laughs> and... That was the thing to have back in the day if you couldn't afford an SLR. But, by gosh, have things changed with the advent of mirrorless technology and uh, more affordable cameras and all that, that awesomeness. And yes, I blame all the smartphone manufacturers, especially Nokia, Motorola, and Apple for coming out with phones that have this right on the back side and maybe one on the front too. 
Yeah, I'm talking about phones with cameras on them. <laughs> Which you can use to do this kind of shooting. So, stabilization, that's one thing you ought to have. And if you can't get it, then number two is to use a high shutter speed. Now on your phone, it'll probably automatically adjust. I can't say that about some of the cheaper phones that are out there, but for the, for the mid-range and high-end phones like the Moto G, Blue V9, uh, LG models like the V40 Think and the Stylos, and of course the high-end phones like Apple's iPhones, Samsung's Galaxies, etc. Those all have stabilization features built in. And those are also, many of them are pretty good about the autofocus and the exposure too. So, with that out of the way, let's go on to how to protect your lens. Now, if you're using a real camera like this, use a lens hood. Because if you don't, your lens will be dirty. I guarantee you that. If you're using a phone, use a case. That way, when you're trying to get the picture out the sleeper window, and let's say the truck shakes a little bit hard, or perhaps, uh, let's say you drop your phone, that you do have some space between the camera lens and whatever the phone hits. Okay, third thing is your light and your time of day. Sunrise and sunset are best, so if you're a night shift driver like me, you'll probably get to see both. Uh, if you're a day shift driver, you'll probably want to get your shots either in the morning or just before you go to bed. Also, if you're doing your 30 minute break at a rest area, you might be able to get a shot then. Just saying. And it's oftentimes many of those rest areas do have some very scenic surroundings and are much better suited to photography versus, uh, well, the truck stops. Because the truck stops have a lot of light pollution and they're usually not in a, such a scenic area. And there are a couple exceptions to that which I'll get to later on in this episode. So, we've covered stabilization, we've covered shutter speed, we've covered protection. Now what about the rest of the exposure triangle, the ISO and the aperture? Again, on your phone it's probably going to set itself. So you want to have a good preview and maybe use your exposure compensation features to ensure that you get, get it light enough or dark enough for your preference. On your camera, you can manually adjust the aperture. If you put the camera into M mode, you might be able to see it here on this Olympus. The M mode allows you to control everything about your camera. Shutter speed, aperture, and the ISO sensitivity. And this is great because you can see, especially with these mirrorless models nowadays, or if you put an SLR into live view, you can see a preview of what the exposure is actually going to look like before you take the picture. And that's a great feature to have, to have on any camera you're using for traveling. Now. There are some situations which you may not be able to use a camera or your phone and therefore will have to put it away for a little bit. For example, don't get your camera out when you're at your company terminal. That may be grounds for being fired or if you can prove you're just taking a landscape shot, it may just be grounds for getting written up or may not even affect you at all. It depends on your company. So check your company's policies for photography first. 
Second, if you do carry a camera in the sleeper and do the kind of shooting that I do, don't be shy about using the camera to document situations that happen on the road because uh, this can serve as a great reminder of how you did in trucking and it can also serve the purpose of maybe being evidence in court. Like if you witness a crash or an aggressive driver and you can get a picture of them um, from your passenger seat or from your sleeper berth or from a safe area where your vehicle stopped. Another situation you might need the skill is let's say that you do want to get into YouTubing like I did. Because, well, quite frankly, you're going to need some pictures for, like, your backdrops and your scenes. And you might even need some video for that, too. And I really like the ability to do both on the same device. It's, it's really great to have that capability. And uh, many people just don't like the phone selfie look anymore because everybody's done it and well, like for instance when I looked at the picture of my uh, shipped grocery delivery driver and my favorite driver today the, sh the ship driver's picture looked just fine fine I could see I could tell what he looked like he didn't look scary at all but the Favor driver who delivered my uh, water burger. Well, he definitely had a scary appearance, and that's because of the fisheye look. I could tell just because of the fact that I could see like how his glasses were distorted and how everything just looked horrible. I would gladly offer to retake that picture, but then again, maybe he has another way to do it, too. Or maybe I could just teach him on how to do that. Just saying. It, I like to call it the phone look, because when I saw the driver in person, he looked a lot better than his picture actually showed. So, and that reminds me, any camera you bring in the sleeper can be used for selfies, especially if it has a flip forward screen and a new generation focusing system, such as dual fast or dual pixel. And uh, it really is great to have it, and especially when you're trying to make sure your selfie's clear and not all shaky and blurry. So yeah, definitely have a good autofocus system whether you use a phone or a real camera. Alright, so with all that stuff out of the way, I'm going to share with you or I'm going to share some pictures with you that I was able to capture on that same day where I was out on the road. So until next time, keep learning, keep thinking, keep driving safely, and that's if you're not under quarantine. And let's make your best trip your next trip, and maybe capture some great memories while you're at it. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye for now.